on this beautiful spring morning, I'm taking a look inside one of the most breathtaking abandoned locations I have ever been. Situated upon a serene lake in northern Canada, this 65,000 square foot mansion features two swimming pools, towering windows, an indoor boat garage, two elevators, an observation lighthouse, and so much more. It is then one of the largest abandoned residences in the entire world. So join me as I find out how it got like this, explore the fascinating ruins, and even analyze the true cost behind this unbelievable abandoned property. Oh my god. Wow. This is like a uh, safety glass collapsing in on itself. Oh my god, I've never seen that before. It sounds like there's other people with me in here. Oh wow, so that, that outer layer of glass was actually the other pane. This one's still intact. Wow, the panel's in here. This looks like the Shangri-La Toronto or something. There's actually pretty significant mold on the, the boards around here. More mold than I thought I was going to see, actually. Wow. Oh, there's the people. As you've probably guessed, this home is unlike any other. The mansion is split into two distinct sections. Essentially, it's two buildings split in half by the massive boulders underneath, connected by a glass bridge. The first is the residence of the owner, Mr. Grant, and that's what we'll be looking at first. A little later in the video, I'll explain why this is, but first, let's look inside the enormous master bedroom. Wow, look at how the water has warped this wood. I think this was the master bedroom. This whole thing was the master bedroom. I'm pretty sure. I bet the bed would go there and I would look onto this. So this was the master bathroom. You can see roughens here for a vanity, which the glass would surround. And then as you make your way over here, you have what would most likely be the shower. With this master suite, you have this like little nook area with the glass. I, this may be the coolest room I've ever seen in an abandoned building. This is so awesome. And then of course this looks down into the courtyard below. This is unbelievable. Holy crap. All right, let's descend. Holy crap. It goes down another floor, too. Oh my god. So, we're in the residence portion of the home. And to myself, I was thinking upstairs, like, oh, you know what? For a mega mansion, the residence portion is actually quite modest. <laughs> Uh, I take that back now. <laughs> you know, what's also freaking me out is that these panels are just falling off from the immense amount of water damage that's down here. Maybe that was the kitchen. Yeah, maybe that's the kitchen. Maybe this is the formal dining room. Yeah, maybe this is the formal dining room and this was the kitchen because those are roughens for uh, an island potentially. At least I think. I don't know. Yeah, probably because that's where the fridge and the... Yeah. That would make sense. So yeah, you're making, 
you're making dinner and you're sitting in your huge dining room and you just have this view. And then this would have been the enormous dining slash family slash living room slash grand hall slash, I don't know, whatever other rich person room you could assign to something like this. This is unbelievable. And again, I, I just can't believe how decayed everything is. And of course, once again, you have these mind-boggling, huge windows that give a pretty spectacular view. Holy crap, this was an infinity edge. Infinity edge pool, potentially? I don't know if this, I don't know if this was a pool or not. Or just like another water feature. But... <laughs> this is a little wet bar, a little bar going into the, the main living space. Oh, and here's that huge courtyard inside. Oh, look at the wood paneling design on the top there. They only installed a few. So this home was built by a man named Peter Grant. He was essentially a forestry tycoon with his company named Grant Forestry Products. The company was very successful and grew to be the number three producer of oriented strand board, a similar make to plywood. The company owned around six mills across North America and employed over a thousand people. Grant himself was Canada's 87th wealthiest person with a net worth estimated at around $400 million in 2004. Since Grant was from around the area, he decided to build his dream home on a 43-acre lakefront plot of land he bought for $110,000 the same year. So he began construction on this astonishing mansion in 2005. But obviously, things didn't go to plan. Look at the rain out there. Off in the distance. I mean, you go up to these glass panels and it's huge. That's probably like 50 feet in the air. Here's the pool area. The output of that waterfall. The, the centerpiece fountain area in the front of the home actually just sprays on into this. This is a really cool pool, actually, because you have half of these rocks, which I don't know how many are natural. Uh, it's just a part of the pool. Uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. I truly am. It, this building goes all the way up there. That's like the third or fourth floor. This building is so enormous, it has its own breakwater wall. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, the home is split into two sections. What I'm entering now is the second structure, and one that had several spaces dedicated for living, but also work. Grant built this home not only for his residence, but as a corporate office for his family-run business. On the main floor and above in the second building, the space would be made up of offices for company executives as well as what was called the Grant Gallery, a showcase of all the company's products. However, the basement level would be dedicated for wellness, including an indoor pool. So this is my pool. It's a nice 60 foot by 50 foot. Oh my god! Unconventional design, all poured cement. Absolutely insane. Wow. Custom steps, and you can see right where the plywood is there. They have um, like a sloping edge. Oh, okay, yeah, it keeps going down. For a deep end. I'm guessing it probably would have been about eight feet. See this edge? Right, here? yeah. Well, let me. This was all a spillover. I don't think I've ever seen a spillover in, an, in a residential pool before yeah this was their filter in here all holy so this is almost a commercial grade like a 
yeah, this an is, industry this is what grade. You see in like a public pool. Right. Yeah. The, this spillover uh, tank of uh, filter. I mean, that's you only see that in hotels. How much do you think the pour for this would cost? This pour alone is probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then to complete this pool, you'd probably need another hundred thousand. It's cold in here. As you can see, oh my god, is that doubled up? Sorry, I only saw the initial like five there. I didn't, I didn't see Holy. all those ones along the back. Oh my god, yeah. So. I thought it was just like five or six pumps for the pool. This is 10 industrial grade pumps. This is what you'd see at like a wave pool. This is probably all utilities. Like look, they have probably gas. Right. Look at the gas lines. It's unbelievable. It's like a hotel. It really is. Yeah, this is a, I mean, look at the, what is this, a water tank? It's hard to even comprehend how much is still left behind here. Since this building got so far in construction, many of the exterior and interior fittings were nearing completion. Utilities were even in a working state by the time of abandonment, and this room is a perfect example of it. What Brennan and I had thought were pumps for pools are actually high-efficiency boilers. At current market value, these nearly brand new units go for around $4,000 each. Now that's just an example, but what about everything else? Well, I talked to engineering professors and industry experts to get an idea of how much all of these materials cost. I did some very generalized calculations based upon market value and estimated sizing, and this is what I came up with. In total, I think there could be almost $2 million worth of salvageable materials that could be pulled from the structure. That's not even factoring in the unbelievable amount of money that must have gone into pouring the foundation, roofing, architectural services, glass, hauling these materials to such a remote area, and so much more. The mansion very well could have climbed into the tens of millions of dollars to build. I would like to mention alongside these findings that I do recognize that finding the location of this home is not difficult, but to respect this property if you do choose to visit. Please don't go here with the intent to vandalize or steal, and please be safe. Well, here's the pool, and then you have this astonishing window. And then right here is a jacuzzi. You're like a kid on Christmas Day and you saw a <laughs> I just, as we were looking at this hot tub, we discovered that there are intact architectural plans, which is what I was looking for all along. I wonder if, like, he would have took clients, because this, this is right underneath the preview center. If he would have took clients, like, uh, Excuse me, Brendan, for... it's the Grant Gallery. Oh, Thank you. So, I'm sorry. I wonder if he would have <laughs> took, took clients to the Grant Gallery. <laughs> Down here. So we got the swimming pool, and then behind that area was what was called the fitness area. And next to that, it was the Pilates. Oh, the weird pentagram room. That was a massage room. What the? Okay, this must have been like an employee. <laughs> oh, and, like... and that place, too, where we saw all the wasted materials on there, that was the private spa. There's a racketeer ball slash squash room in here, too. Yeah, oh, that's what that room is. <laughs> Welcome to Racquetball. Holy crap. I know. Oh my god! I honestly was shocked at how far back it goes and how high it is. I, uh, I, I doubt it comes across on video, but this is any... Well, go stand down there, Brennan. It's like for 40, scale. 40 feet by like 20 feet wide and then another maybe like 40 <laughs> feet tall. So, uh, coming in from that area, this is classified as an office right here. And uh, I assume because of its enormity and view and just scale, I think this is Mr. Grant's office. This is a perfect example of how the glass works in this house, how separated the two panels are. You can see uh, someone tried and broke through all the way, but some of the glass that they did break fell in between the two panels here. But you can feel how thick it is. Yeah, Sounds bulletproof. So these were all individual offices that uh, snaked around the, the curvature of the building here. And this would have been for uh, 
well, what they called, and at least according to the architectural plans, again, the Grant Gallery. It says right here. Right, Grant. Grant Forest Products, unbelievable, eh? Grant Forestry Products had taken a huge financial hit during the global recession of 2008. I would imagine that since their products were so heavily used in construction, that when the economy collapsed, their contracts dried up. This coincided with the company's effort to expand their reach with building new facilities. This poor timing put the company in a tedious position, and suddenly they were in over $600 million worth of debt. Grant declared bankruptcy, and the company was liquidated soon after. What's interesting about that, however, is that the mansion was nearing completion at the time of bankruptcy. While there's not a ton of information on this, as Mr. Grant himself is a very private person, it could be inferred that the mansion was under the company's title and not his. So, when creditors began seeking restitution, the home was also grouped into the company's liquidation. At this time, the mansion was around 70% complete. Wow, this is a grand room. Underneath all of these uh, tarps is like newly laid down stone. And you could see that, uh, you know, it's been left like this since they started construction. They covered these to, to lay down the floors, I assume, and the ceilings. But this is literally all going to waste. Here's one of the elevator shafts. Yeah, these are our air vents. These um, these slits, you see them a lot with uh, with all of the all the windows. These are air vents. So whew, this is the top floor of the mansion, and holy crap! Look at this. A ton of people came up here. Look at. On the architectural plans, they call this the lighthouse. The whole time we were here, I had been wondering to myself of what the true cost of this property would be elsewhere. We're several hours north of any major city in Canada, with property value here priced around $250 a square foot. In 2010, the mansion was put up for sale by the liquidators for $25 million. So, it was valued at around $384 a square foot, already around $100 more than the average home here. Now, to put that $25 million list price in perspective, adjusting that price per square foot to a moderately sized city in southern Canada, that list price for this home could be over $70 million. Following the 2010 listing, the mansion was eventually sold to a company named Crown Capital Corporation for an undisclosed price, yet they did little to keep the property in good condition. According to a lawsuit filed against that company in 2019, the mansion's dehumidifiers were kept on to maintain the moisture levels inside. However, due to non-payment, utilities to the structure were disconnected in 2016, and obviously, moisture has taken its toll in here. The owners were neglecting their mortgage, and the unpaid property taxes were climbing to over $140,000. What's even more astonishing is that in 2017, the city took control and brought it to a public tender auction with a starting bid of $152,700. Not a single person placed an offer. The formerly $25 million home was now at auction for just $150,000. So, without any interest, the building continued to sit abandoned. This, uh, this hallway is just lined with panels of huge glass. And it actually runs over where the waterfall would have come out right here. This is astonishing. So that, that water feature would go over there and it would literally cross underneath this like glass bridge so one way to discern from the office portion of the structure to the residence structure is by the paneling um i don't think any of the office portions of the structure have these 
wood panels. And honestly, I love them. I love these. I think this looks great. I think most of this flooring was already laid. I haven't noticed it until now, but everywhere I think where plywood is laid down, I think that tile has been put down. Okay, so we're on the lowest level now of the home. So this is the exterior of the boat dock. Huh. I wonder how deep this little cove is. Like, doesn't it just sound like there's a bunch of things running around? Oh my God. You can see the bumpers of how you would board right there. Probably would have been a solid, like, 40 footer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably about 40 feet. Look at how, <laughs> look at the lining of the roof. This luxurious wooden finish. Yeah, the saddest part is this was never used. Yeah, because no. like, these lights are still winterized if you look at the plastic bags. Oh, you're right, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's really weird in here. It's super cold in this room. And there's actually, this is all ice. Yeah. So just as reference, uh, today it's supposed to get to 75 degrees. Yesterday it was 72, I think, which is about uh, 23 degrees, 24 degrees, 25 degrees Celsius. Um, and... It's freezing in, literally, it's frozen in here. The further you move in, the colder it gets. Yeah. It's like a service. Wow. There's a closet in there. Good Lord, look at the roof. The water damage in here is significant. Oh my god, yeah. No, do you wonder why I didn't want to go down those stairs, Brennan? Wow, this is one of the most extraordinary abandoned places I've ever seen. Just this room alone. These huge cement walls. The vents right here. My god. Look at the bowing of that section of the roof right there. Yeah, that's about to be, look like the one on this side. Wow. There are very few abandoned places in the world that I am truly speechless over. Remarkable locations that are so unbelievable in their current state that they don't even seem real. This is undoubtedly one of them. An incredible piece of architecture rarely ever seen in an operating state, let alone one that's abandoned. At the end of the day, standing in these unbelievable spaces had just made me astonished by the sheer waste this property has become. From what I hear, the current landowners are merely just getting by in their tax payments, preventing another land auction. But at the same time, they're almost doing nothing to maintain the property, and at this point, both natural decay and human vandalism have likely sealed the fate for this mansion. I think, economically, this property is too far gone, and the lack of any interest even at $150,000 is a showcase of how big of a disaster this was. The home was built built specifically for Mr. Grant. He was certainly the wealthiest person in the area, but without his presence, what other millionaire wants to live that far away from any major city? Not to mention, the cost to repair everything would get well into the millions of dollars. Really, the future doesn't look good for this home, and once again, according to that lawsuit, it assumes that any purchaser of the land would at this point buy the property solely for the land and demolish the existing unfinished mansion. Today, Peter Grant is still alive and living on his own waterfront home and private golf course in a nearby town. And while the citizens in this small community praise him for his contributions to their town, the lasting effects of the Grant enterprise can be seen in the abandoned factory down the road, and now this very infamous mansion. This truly unprecedented structure gives a surreal look into ruins from our modern times. A direct result of how devastating the 2008 financial crisis was, 
and perhaps how even private homes can be too ostentatious for their own good. But in the end, it truly is unbelievable to see a record-breaking mansion this big, so close to being finished, just forgotten about. Everything left there to rot away. Thanks for watching everyone, and be safe. Well, look at all this. It's just all of, all of these stones that they use throughout the home, both interior and exterior. Just pallets of these just sitting here. My god. I think these are uh, sections of the roof, too. Well, these are concrete. All the construction materials just strewn about. What an enormous waste. It's kind of the theme of this video, isn't it?